Uh, you can see obviously I have all these plates welded up with gussets underneath and starting to hook up all the brakes and all that. Uh, I got new, new rubber lines. Uh, everything's pretty much new except the rotors were good so we just painted the center section. So right now I'm working on the steering box. The steering box worked before with the old subframe and we made everything around it but if you remember right the subframe before was straight. Obviously now that there's a Z in here the steering box itself sits up higher so now we're gonna have to redo this steering linkage here. So what I did it not only needs to come up a little bit, but it also needs to come in because the old set frame was narrower than this one. Uh, so what I did here was I made some spacers. I don't know if you can see them down there. There's two shiny spacers in there. And that's about a half an inch. So it kind of tilts the steering box back towards the center of the car, back towards where the steering column is. Now you can see it's not, never going to line up uh, with all that, with just tweaking and spacers and whatnot. So what I'm going to have to actually do is take these bolts out, notch this out more so I can lift it up, and then pivot it a little bit this way. In here, if you look, you can see that there's, <coughs> there's the bracket that's mounted in there. Uh, it's a little bit of, there's a little bit of movement in this. I think I'll be able to get enough to get it to line up. Uh, and then I'll have just the one rag joint only in here, right in here. Uh, some people, Eliminate these, but I'm gonna keep it in here. Uh, get a little bit of flex. So basically, all I'm gonna do is unbolt these bolts here and start cutting and get this closer so it lines up a little bit closer. You can see it's it's close, kind of, sort of, but not close enough. Uh, this shaft goes in and out. So yeah, some of the struggles. Now you can see that that steering column is getting closer to the same plane of the steering box here. Just a little bit off yet. So what do you think we do? Do you think that we try and cut this and raise it more? Cut this arc here so this end raises up more? You could do it that way, but if you do it that way, then this is gonna be at this kind of angle and the steering box is at this angle. So you want the steering column itself, the whole thing to go up. So if the whole thing goes up, then they both then it stays at that level that it's at right there, but it goes up. So then instead of having uh, dude, dude, exaggerated, obviously. You have just a straight line. So the whole steering column has to go up. So what I have to do here, which is fine because my dash has plenty of clearance here. What I have to do here is I have it marked. Uh, you probably can't see, but I'm gonna have to drill holes so that I can lift this up and then remount it. Uh, I'll show you a little bit better with some better light quick. See there, you can see we have three holes in there for different mounting options. Originally we were in the middle hole, then I moved it down a hole, now I'm gonna have to drill another hole about an inch down so it lifts this whole thing up about an inch. You can see I got about at least two inches of clearance there, so I could probably even go more if I wanted to. And then down here, since this is hard to explain, but I'll show you a little bit here. Now down here, originally there was uh, there's this bracket in here. You can see that firewall bracket that's welded to the steering column. Now, originally this steering column was at more of an angle. It's at more of an angle downward. So where this mounting tab was, was actually further away from the firewall. So now that I'm pushing up on it and making this more straight, uh, the firewall is actually getting pushed out. So I have to actually push this, pull this whole steering column back so that it can arc or radius up. Because obviously as it gets straighter, you get less of a distance from the firewall. I guess that's kind of hard to understand, but it's basic geometry. So uh, I'm going to have to actually offset these. You can see I wrote a quarter of an inch off center. Okay. Probably end up going like maybe three eighths, somewhere in there. Uh, so yeah, another thing I could do is I could mount this end and then do this end according to that. But uh, there's basically, you can do it multiple different ways. I'm gonna do it this way and hopefully it works out. And then I am going to move this brake uh, proportioning valve where it mounts, move it over about an inch so that I can bring this up, up and over a little bit more so it lines up with this box. Now I'm not sure how many of you guys watched the previous build. Uh, and there's a lot of specifics that I might kind of double touch on in this build series as well as the last one, uh, Wild Torquey. And, but anyways, uh, I'm gonna try and keep you guys informed of what I'm doing here. So what I have here is it's called a weld nut. You can see it's a tapped quarter 20 steel um, little flange. It's basically the same as a nut except it has a flat spot you can weld on. 
Uh, what I'm using, what I'm doing here is I'm relocating this brake line or this brake proportioning valve over a little bit. So if you look in there, you can see there's previously we put weld nuts in there, but that is in the, not going to work where it's at. So I had to put new weld nuts in here. So what I do, obviously, they go on the inside, but I'll just show you for demonstration purposes. You put that in there like that after deburring the hole. Um, put that in there like that, and then you just weld a few little tacks. Uh, if you keep the bolt in it, or if you put a bolt in it, it'll help hold it in place, and it'll also help the threads from being warped from the heat. Now right here you can see that it's a quarter 20 bolt, okay? But the opening for the hole that you need so that it fits flush is about 310 or uh, 3 sixteenths, or no, 5 sixteenths. So I drilled a hole slightly big, so 5 sixteenths, and then it'll fit flush. Like right here you can see it's flush. So it works nice. Okay, so that's that. Uh, gonna do all this on the inside, cut out those old weld nuts, and then I can move the steering column over to get it closer to where I need it to be. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I hate redoing work, but this is one of those cars where every time you change something, something else is changed by it. It was messed up in the 90s, so now I'm out here fixing it, and uh, yeah, so it's painting my ass. But that's all right, it's a good experience, and I can show you guys kinda how basic street rods built. So we got this tunnel tacked in. Uh, it's not exactly perfect. We had a couple uh, failed attempts that kind of left us with a little bit uglier um, work than we'd like, but it'll look good once it's all covered up with carpet. Uh, I gotta take it and I'll stitch weld all the way around now. Uh, it's just all tacked together. And then we'll seam seal it so nothing can get in. You can see it blends in nicely into this. And then goes up and there's a, like probably an inch and a half, two inches of clear clearance, oh, excuse me. I'm sick, so don't mind the nasally voice, uh, but down here working anyways. Yes. 
So we had the motor, tranny, torque converter, and uh, flex plate all hooked up, and we ran into a problem where the motor wouldn't turn over uh, once we got it all tightened up. And I kind of figured it was the flex plate being in a cheap flex plate, and it was. So right here you can see, I have this set on the floor. I'm just rocking it back and forth. That's how far out of straight that this flex plate is. Just a piece of junk. Now here's another one, same exact brand. Spots from the same place, everything's the same. Now this one has a little bit, but not nearly as much as this one. You can see this was also grinding up on the starter housing, and overall it's just no good. So just a little tip for you guys, before you go through putting all your stuff together, before you go through painting everything, uh, check to see how uh, straight your flat flex plate is because it can make of a world of a difference. And of course, if you got money, buy a better one. But uh, for this build, try to keep it on a budget. So something like this, 25 bucks. Just gotta make sure you get a good one. So this one's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and prime it up and uh, don't necessarily have to paint it, but I probably will. Just prime it up so it don't rust too bad and then throw it all back together.